Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, so for this video, I wanted to show you guys uh, a new product that we had developed, um, our signal boosters. Uh, they are on the, available on the website right now uh, for anyone that wants to get a set. So the way these work, um, they will take a signal coming out of an LED and boost it so that you can go over a long run. Uh, so I have a setup here that is uh, simulating uh, something like a two-piece light. And let's say you have a uh, set of tail lights that you're building. There's four pieces to them. You have the two lights that go on the uh, trunk lid, and you have the two outer lights on the back of the bumper. Um, this would, let's say, you'd have some, some, you know, a strip of some addressable LEDs. From that, you go over to a uh, five-volt inverter, running to some five mil LEDs like I have here. And then out of that, you're going into your next light. Now, if I run from that directly into this, and I did convert back to 12 volt here, you know, power injection and all that stuff. So the power is not running through these LEDs or anything. But uh, as you can see, when I plug directly in, I'm fine. Now the problem with that, as we all know, you have to have extensions so that you can run from that outer light up through the uh, the trunk lid to the other light so that you don't have any wires preventing the trunk from opening or causing issues. Um, once you implement that, what you start to see sometimes is some interference. As you can see, I've got an LED now that is not happy. It's flickering. I plug up this strip and now it's blue. I have no no data line coming here. The power is making it perfectly fine. It's the data that is the issue. Um, and uh, what I can do to fix that is add one of these in. And these do not have to be added in the middle. They're actually uh, will do a much better job if you add them at the beginning because they are a signal booster. So the closer they are to that last LED, the better. So in this case, I would just put this right inside of the light. It'll go right before my output, and it fixes my data out issue. So this here is cleaning up that signal, pushing it out through my 15-foot extension wire, which is massive overkill. Most of yours are probably more like 6-foot. Um, and then heading to my secondary light and I'm having no issues doing that. Um, so it gives you an idea. This is a little bit extreme, but it was a way that I could try to replicate the issue. Um, in many cases, you won't see this problem. Like if I were to go directly from the UCS through the long wire out to the other UCS, uh, I won't have that issue. Uh, it seems like if you're coming from the 5 mil to the UCS, you have the issue. Uh, sometimes if you're going from the UCS to the 5 mil, you might have an issue. Um, the, the, it seems to be jumping from LED to LED has an issue. But I have also seen it going from UCS to UCS over a long run where it was picking up some kind of a data feedback that I could not for the life of me figure out. Um, and that's where these really do come in handy uh, because it, it, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, a lot of the trial and error because... It is very simple in what it does. Um, so these are good to have on hand in case you do run into that issue of a flicker. You don't want to rebuild or rewire your lights or you know have to try and troubleshoot and figure out what the issue is. Um, this is a good way to go ahead and boost that signal and make it better. Um, it can also be insurance. You know, Let's say you're doing a lot of taillights and you just don't want any of them coming back. Uh, potential for feedback or things like that on the car, which is always a possibility. You may not see it on the bench. It gets to your customer, it gets on their car, and all of a sudden they start seeing the issue. That is a good way to ensure yourself that you don't have that problem. Um, I don't know that, that I'll necessarily be putting it on all of my tails uh, because I don't generally see the issue a lot. It's, it's, it's a little more rare. Um, but because it does happen, and I know how frustrating it can be, I, I did want to go ahead and invest and get something developed that could amplify that signal. Um, and it is important to note that this is an amplifier. Uh, this itself does not have any address point. Um, so within your uh, controller, you do not have to factor this in when programming. So let's say if you had a customer that's having a problem and you just want to send him one of these and he can add it in line, 
uh, he will not have to reprogram his ghost controller to offset for any kind of an address that this might take up because it does not. It boosts the signal. And it will boost whatever signal it's given. So it's compatible with RGB, RGBW, GRBW, GRB, whatever combination you have, color combination, it does not matter. It's compatible. It's compatible 5 volt to 24 volts. It is also uh, compatible with double data. So if you are using something like a WS2815, um, uh, GS8202, uh, something like that, you can use these. Uh, you will have to modify them though because we uh, we attach just the three wire. Uh, most everything we do is three wire. Um, so we did only do the three wire connection so it would be mostly compatible with what we sell. Uh, but if you are someone that is using something with the double data, uh, there is a solder pad on the board for that fourth pin. All you would have to do is just, uh, this is this is basically designed just like an IP68 underglow. Um, you would just remove the silicone sleeving. There is some silicone packed inside to keep it waterproof. Um, and all you would have to do is just uh, solder on that extra connection for your, your double data, uh, if that is something you need. They are directional, uh, so you do have an arrow on the board that tells you which side is in, which side you know the, the flow is on them. Um, and obviously the plugs can be cut off and you can make waterproof plugs if needed. Uh, but this will boost your signal. It should eliminate the problem. Uh, I've built a lot of sets and I have talked to a lot of people. It is not common. Uh, but trust me when I say that when we do see it, uh, it is a nightmare. Um, so it's something you definitely want to have on hand because trying to troubleshoot can be a, a real pain in the butt. Um, and this should make that so much easier. Uh, just to grab one, throw it on, and move on with your day. Um, so I definitely recommend having one or two on hand. Uh, I still do sell them by the pair, so you know, have two on hand. Um, and that way, if you do run into the issue, grab it out of your box or whatever and uh, give it a shot and see if it works. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Hope this uh, explains its function and how it works a little bit better. And um, definitely make sure you subscribe.